You're almost thinking, what's going on here? What is going on here? Okay, so this is a wonderful Thanksgiving tradition, not just at Green Art, but around since the 60s. This is Alice's Restaurant by Arlo Guthrie, the anti-massacre. I don't say it right, but Hippie does, so he'll tell you. Um, everybody, welcome Hippie Mark and those total strangers! <laughs> Well, it all started about 46 years ago now that it all started. When I went to visit my friend Alice at the restaurant. Alice, she doesn't live at the restaurant. She lives in the church nearby the restaurant. Her husband Ray and Gatcha the dog. And that's why I call this song Alice's Restaurant. But Alice's Restaurant's not the name of the restaurant. It's the name of the song. That's why I call this song Alice's Restaurant. Confused yet? I said you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Like I said, it was about 46 years ago now that I went to visit my friend Alice at the restaurant, Stockbridge, Massachusetts. But Alice, she doesn't live at the restaurant. Like I said, she lives in the church nearby the restaurant with her husband Ray and got to the dog, and that's why this song is called Alice's Restaurant. They had a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be. They took out the pews. And they had a lot of room. And they figured they didn't have to take out their garbage for a long time. Besides it smelling kind of funny, we thought it'd be a friendly gesture to take the shovels and rakes and implements of destruction and take the half a ton of garbage on down to the city dump. So that's what we did. We took the shovels and rakes and implements of destruction and put the half ton of garbage in my red VW microbus and drove off to the city down. We got there and there was a sign across the road with a chain that said dump closed on Thanksgiving and we'd never heard of a dump being closed on Thanksgiving before and with tears in our eyes we drove off into the sunset looking for another place to put the garbage. We didn't find one, though, until we came upon a side road, and off the side of the side road was a 15-foot cliff. And there at the bottom of the cliff was another half a ton of garbage. We figured that one big pile is better than two little piles, and instead of bringing that one up, we decided we'd throw ours down, so that's what we did. We took the shovels and rakes and implements of destruction and put the half ton of garbage on top of the other half ton of garbage and went back to the church and had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat and didn't get up the very next morning when we got a phone call from Officer Obi. He said, Kid, I found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a cliff under a half a ton of garbage. We were just wondering if you had any information about it. I said, well, yes, sir, uh, Officer Obi, I cannot tell a lie. I, I, I put that envelope under that garbage. He said, yeah, we were in too much trouble. He just wanted us to go down and got to the scene of the crime, unquote. And we went down to the scene of the crime, unquote. They was using a... I got to tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts in 1966, 67. What you had happening here is you got two police officers, one stop sign, one police car, and this being the biggest crime of the last 50 years, everybody wanted to get in a newspaper story about it. They was using up all kinds of cop equipment they had down there at the police officer station they had never used before. And they was taking dog smelling prints and plaster prints, and they took 27 8 by 10 color glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one, explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us in the court of law. They took pictures of the approach, the getaway, the northwest corner, the southwest corner, and brother. That's not to mention the uh, aerial photography. All the way to the police officer station, we were trying to figure out what was going to happen. And we figured there was one or two things that was going to happen when we got to the police officer station. And the first thing was that we'd probably be given a, maybe a medal for being so brave and honest on the telephone, which wasn't so very likely, and we didn't expect it. And the, Second one was that we'd be told never to be seen driving garbage around the city again, which is what we expected, but when we got to the police officer station, friends, there was a third possibility that we had not even counted upon, and we was all immediately arrested and handcuffed, and 
I said, Officer Obie, I, I don't think I can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on. <laughs> He said, shut up, kid. <laughs> I'm going to put you in the cell. I want your wallet and your belt. I said, well, Officer Roby, I can understand you want my wallet, so I don't have any money to spend in your cell here, but what do you want my belt for? Hmm. He looked at me and he said, kid, we don't want any hanging. And I said, Officer Roby, what what you think I was going to do, hang myself for littering? Obi said he was just making sure, and friends, he, Obi was too, because he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and drown. And he took out the toilet paper so I couldn't bend the bars, roll the to- so I couldn't bend the bars, roll the toilet paper out the window, slide down the road, and have an escape. And it was about four or five hours later that Alice, remember Alice? Yeah. It's a song about Alice. Anyway, Alice, she came down there to the police officer station and with a few real mean, nasty, ugly words to Obi on the side, bailed us out of jail. And we went back to the church and had us another Thanksgiving dinner that just couldn't be beaten, didn't get up to the very next morning, and we all had to go to court. We all walked in, and a man walked in and said, All rise, we all stood up. And Obi stood up with the 27, 8 by 10, color glossy pictures with the circles and arrows, and a paragraph on the back of each one, explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us in a court of law. And the judge walked in with a CNI dog. <laughs> and Obi looked at the CNI dog. Then at the 27, 8 by 10, colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows, and a paragraph on the back of each one. And then he looked at the CNI dog. And then at the 27 8 by 10 color glossy pictures of the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one. And Obi began to cry, folks. Yes, sir, he began to cry because Obi, he came to the general realization that it was just going to be another typical case of American blind justice. And the judge wasn't going to look at the 27 8 by 10 color glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us in the court of law. And we was all fined $50 and had to pick up the garbage in the snow. But that's not what I came to tell you about. I came to talk about the draft. The lottery draft. The real draft. For those of you who do not know what the draft is, you're welcome. I said, for those of you who do not know what the draft is, you're welcome. But now, if you live back in those days like we did, and you were lucky enough to live in New York City, they got this building, it's called Whitehall Street, where you walked in, you got injected, detected, neglected, and selected. I went down there to get my physical examination one day, I mean, you know, I got good and drunk the night before, so I looked and felt my best. I mean, you know, I wanted to be the all-American kid in New York City, and I was humped down, run down, and all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly stuff there. And I walked up to the man there, and he looked at me, and he said, Kid, I only got one question for you. Have you ever been arrested? I proceeded to tell him the Alice's Restaurant Anti Massacre with the five part harmony and stuff like that. And he stopped me right there and said, Kid, did you ever go to court? I proceeded to tell him about the 27 8 by 10 color dog feet. He stopped me right there and said, Kid, I want you to go over there and uh, sit on that, see that man in room 604, the psychiatrist room, right? Now, kid, so. I walked over to the psychiatrist's office, room 604. I walked in the door and I walked up to the shrink and I said, Shrink, I want to kill. <laughs> That's right, I said, I want to kill. I want to eat dead burnt bodies, see veins in my teeth, burn women, houses, children, and villages. sergeant came in and pinned a medal on us. I didn't think that was too good. 
Went on back down the hall there, getting more injections, inspections, all kinds of stuff like that there. And it came to the very last man, he said, Q. you to go over there and sit on that uh, fence there that says uh, Group W. We don't like your kind. So friends, we're going to send your fingerprints off to Washington. So I, I walked over to the Group W bench there and there's all kinds of weird, ugly, mean, nasty people on the bench there. Mother rapers on the bench there. And father stabbers and Father stabbers and mother rapers and father rapers and mother stabbers right there in the group W bench and there was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly, crime fighting guys and meanest, ugliest, nastiest one walked over to me and he said, kid, what'd you get? I said, I, I, I didn't get nothing, man. I had to pay $50 and pick up the garbage in the snow. He said, no, man, what are you in for? Littering. And they all moved away from me on the bench there, the big old hairy eyeball and stuff like that, and, and until I said in Crete and a nuisance. They all came back and we had fun filling out the forms and playing with the pencils there on the bench. Pretty soon a man came in, had some paper in his hand, and he, uh. Now, uh, kids, uh, th this, this paper's got uh, 47 words and that. Uh, 57 sentences, and we want to know the, the details of the crime. Talk for 45 and minutes, and nobody understood a damn thing he was trying to say, but we had fun, like I said, filling out the forms there on the Group W bench. I filled out the massacre like it was with a five-part harmony and stuff like that, and I got finished, and I put down the pencil, and I turned over the piece of paper, and there, there on the other side, in the middle of the other side, away from everything else on the other side, quoted, underlined, read the following words. Kid, have you rehabilitated yourself? I walked over to the sergeant. I said, Sergeant, you got a lot of goddamn gall. Ask me if I have rehabilitated myself. I mean, I mean, I'm just sitting. I mean, I'm sitting here on the bench. I'm sitting here on the group W bench, and you want to know if I'm moral enough to join the army, burn women, houses, and children after being a litter bug? <laughs> he said, That's right, kid. You know what? We we don't like your kind. We're gonna send your fingerprints off to Washington. And friends, somewhere in Washington, enshrined in some manila folder, is a study in black and white of our fingerprints. And the only reason I'm telling you this is that you may find yourself in a situation similar to this someday. Or you may know somebody in a situation similar to this someday. And if you know somebody in a situation like this, or you find yourself in a situation like this, there's only one thing you can do. You walk into the shrink wherever you are, and you say, shrink. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk out! Can you imagine if, if you walked in, you sang a bar at Alice's Restaurant, walked out, they'd think you was crazy and they wouldn't take you. For those of you, like I said, who do not know what the draft is, you're welcome. And if two people did it, of the same gender, in harmony, well, heck, when, I don't know if they can figure it out or not. They don't know what to do. Maybe they just wouldn't take either of you. But <laughs> well, we don't know that. And if three people did it, can you imagine three? Can you imagine 30 people a day walking in, singing the bar houses, restaurant, walking out? They might think it was a movement, some sort of a Christian organization, tax exempt and stuff. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? I can see it now. The Jerry Falwell, I ain't into killing organization. That's right. Right here at the tip top of the time and temperature tower right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the Dewey Discount House of Worship and Car Wash. That's right. And if 30 people, can you imagine 30,000 people a day walking in and singing a bar, Alice's restaurant, walking out, they might think it was a movement.
Heck, you guys are too young to know what a movement's about. Or well, maybe not all kinds of movements. Are y'all ready now? Yeah. Get anything you want at Alice's restaurant, except in Alice. You can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. You just walk right in, it's around the back. It's just a half a mile from the railroad track. And you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. Now that was horrible. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. You have had decades of time to get this down. I'm not tired. I'm not bored. I've been doing this song for 46 years, too. So, you gotta know, to, if you want to stop a war step, you gotta sing loud all the way through the whole thing, not just part of it. So, We'll do it again this time. Let me hear you do it. And maybe we can uh, get all them boys back home forever and ever and ever. Thanksgiving, everybody.